Hi, this is Kevin, and I'm here to share what I have on the subset sum problem. I created this to help me and maybe others learn and remember what these academic concepts are. Well, let's get started. Say you were in elementary school and you had a math teacher. You just finished learning how to add and subtract numbers. The teacher doesn't have anything else to teach, so he or she decides to give you busy work so that she can do something else. She gives a math problem. The question is, which of these numbers, when added together, add up to 16? And then she spirits away. This kind of question is the subset sum problem. There are many ways of solving it, and in this video, we'll use the dynamic programming approach to solve it. First, construct a two by two grid. The number of rows in the grid is the number of rows in the set we're trying to solve, plus one. So the evil teacher gave us five elements as part of the given set, three, five, nine, four, and eight. And so there are five rows plus one, six rows in this grid. Number of columns is the same as the target sum plus one. So the target sum is 16, so we have 16 columns plus one, or 17 columns from zero to 16. We will be filling this grid with true and false values. A true value means that the value in this column is the sum of the subset of numbers in the row for that column. It'll be clearer with some examples. For example, this field would be true because if you look at the set 3, 5, and 9, there is a subset whose sum equals 12. That's 9 and 3. Another example, this field would be true because if you look at the set 3, 5, 9, and 4, there is a subset whose sum equals 9. That is 5 and 4. This would be false because if you're looking at the set 3, 5, and 9, there is no subset of numbers in that set. That adds up to 7. Like, is 3 plus 5 7? No. Is 9 plus 5 7? No. So, no subset adds up to 7, and that's why it's false. Here, this would also be false because if we're looking at the set 3 and 5, there are no subset of numbers in that set that add up to 6. Here's a tricky question. If we're looking at the set 3 and 5, is there a subset of the set 3, 5 that add up to 0? The answer is yes, because the empty set is a subset of 3 and 5. And the sum of all the values in the empty set is 0 because there is nothing really to add, you know. So that's why we put a true there. So that means if you think about it, you can put true down for all the values in the first column, because no matter what set we have, an empty set will always be a subset of any set, and the sum of that empty set will always be zero. That leads us to our first observation. The zeroth column, or the leftmost column of the grid, is always true. Now it's time to traverse this grid. It's gonna be tedious and repetitive, if it isn't already, so please bear with me. Let's look at the set that consists only of the three. Is there a subset here that adds up to one? Still looking at a set that consists only of three. Is there a subset there that adds up to two? False. Keep looking. Is there a subset here that adds up to three? True, because a subset in this set we're looking at is three. And if you add up all the elements in the set, you get a three. Let's keep looking. Is there a subset in this set that adds up to four? False. Five? False. Six? False. False. Actually, it's false all the way through because there isn't a subset in the set of three that adds up to anything more than three. We already did this, so let's skip it. No subset in three and five will add up to two, so false. There is a subset in three and five that will add up to three, so true. But wait, notice something here. If a grid that we're trying to fill out is this, and the cell at the top is true, then doesn't it always mean that this grid is true because if you think about it, this is a subset of this. So one of the subsets of 3 and 5 is 3. That means that if the upper grid is true, then the bottom grid should also be true, because you could always exclude the element in the bottom number. That leads us to our second observation. If the value in the row above the cell we're looking at is true, then the current cell is always true. There is no subset of 3 and 5 that will add up to 4, so false. Before we continue, let's make another observation here. These numbers are all smaller than 5. So if there was a sum in the subset of 3 and 5 for 1, 2, 3, and 4, none of them would include 5. It may or may not include 3, though. For that reason, since the answer to whether this is true or false depends on whether it is true or false in the previous row, we could just copy the values from the previous row to the current row. That leads us to our third observation. If the number at the top is less than the current number in the row, 
then copy the values from the previous row. Looking at set 3 and 5, any subset that adds up to 5? True. False. False. True. Although this bears some explaining. Let's break it down. We know it is true because if you subtract 5 from 8, you're left with 3. There is a subset in 3 that adds up to 3, which we already determined to be true. So what we do here is we subtract 5 from 8, and that's 3, and we check the value for 3 in the previous row. The value for 3 is true, so that's why this value is also true. This leads us to our last observation. Check if there is a subset for the value of the difference of the number at the top minus the number in the current row. With these four observations, we can just whiz through the rest of the grid. Based on observation 3, 9 minus 5 is 4. 4 is false, so false. 10, false, false, false. Based on observation 2, we can just copy these from here to here. True, this is false, false, true, false, true, and the rest is false. I'm just going to go ahead and fill out the rest of the grid. Now that we've filled out the grid, is there a subset of the numbers that was given to us earlier that equals 16? Yes, because the last row of the last column is true. Great! What numbers are those? To find the numbers, go to the last row of the last column of the grid. Then keep moving up until you hit a row with a false in the previous row. Next, subtract the row value from the top value to get the column value. So since 16 minus 4 is 12, we look at column 12. The row that has a true in it is 9. Now just keep repeating this process. 12 minus 9 is 3, so look at column 3. Column 3 has a row of 3. And there you have it. You can tell the teacher that gave the original problem that you found the answer. 3 plus 9 plus 4 is 16. Well, that's it for the subset sub problem with dynamic programming. I hope this helps. If you like this content, please hit like and subscribe. I hope you had a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.